Uh, all right, so I'm Karthik, and so I'm kind of confused what I want to talk about right now, but this is Meta Refresh, so I was a speaker last year, I spoke about performance, and I see a lot of new faces, so what I'm going to do is like give you like a two minute drill down on what you should do to actually make your app's performance, and then I'll talk about what I actually want to talk about. Uh, so uh, basically, you know, uh, there's a tool called Wiselow from the good folks at Yahoo. So just install this in your browser. Just click one button, it'll give you a whole bunch of recommendations on what you should actually do to make your site perform well. Follow them one by one dutifully, and you will have much more happier customers, and you will be happier ever after that. Uh, once you do that, uh, this is pretty much 101, and then uh, everyone talks about putting stuff on a CDN. Uh, there's a very cheap alternative called Cloudflare. Uh, just go sign up, free registrations, one click again, your site is magically faster. I mean, it's not all that faster, but I think it works for someone just starting off to make your site faster. Uh, and this is pretty much it. Now, when it comes to you actually writing your code, uh, do not have things on your page which are not necessary, which is pretty obvious, right? Don't have fancy animations and stuff. Not going to help anyone. Uh, the other thing is when you're writing JavaScript, uh, it kind of blocks your page's uh, performance. So load JavaScript asynchronously. Uh, there is this you know, very uh, beautiful recommendation on the wise lobes uh, guidelines, which basically says load JavaScript at the footer. Uh, that was kind of outdated, I think. I mean, it no longer applies. Uh, so load JavaScript at your header asynchronously, which basically means your network request would start off immediately, but the actual processing and execution of JavaScript happens later instead of you doing it completely towards the end. So do that. I think this is pretty much what you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, so you have a bunch of JavaScript loaders, uh, most popular being LabJS. Uh, just, you know, that's one small, I think, 4KB minified JavaScript library. Just call that and put jQuery and all your other uh, JavaScript files into it. What it'll actually do is it'll fire off the network request for loading these libraries. Uh, so the, brow the browser downloads these JavaScript files as soon as you hit it, but the execution happens later, much later. So then the usual style of putting it at the foot up, and you trigger a download much later. So you can do that. It's pretty easy, and it works. I didn't expect questions in this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Five JS files that I'm loading, mm -hmm. and uh, say after two JS files, there is actually some script that I want to run on the page. Okay. So maybe you know there is dynamic data from the backend that I want to just inject into JavaScript. So after loading two files, there is uh, printed JavaScript, and then there are more files. Uh, would LabJS support that? What I'm trying to say is, what you should be doing is your loading and execution is to be separated. So you still download your script files, but you execute them on demand. Yeah, but uh, what if there is uh, JavaScript that needs to be executed between, uh, say, there are five files that are loading? Let's take this offline. Sorry? Let's take this offline. Okay. I'll discuss it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we need to do this after this. I'm going to... Uh, uh, and so this is what I wanted, basic log performance. And this whole new pet peeve that I have right now is obsess over metrics which is what I actually want to talk about. Uh, so there's this awesome library from guys at Etsy called StatsD, which is a Node.js based library. What it basically allows you to do is, you know, uh, is something completely isolated from your app. And all of you guys who are running a startup, building products, uh, you can track trivial things all the way from a user coming to your website, clicking something. Uh, you can basically obsess over data. It's called data pawn. You know, that, that's what it is. So you can track all kinds of stuff. Uh, the benefit of this is you can do all kinds of fancy analysis and actually see what works for you in a very cheap and reliable way without actually breaking your app's performance. It's completely asynchronous and all that. So just check out Net, uh, Etsy's uh, StatsD. There's a wonderful blog post by them. It's called We Measure Everything or Why Measure Everything. So just have a look at that. And I think that's pretty much what I want to say. Yep. Thanks a lot, Kar. Thanks a lot, Karthik. Uh, let's quickly uh, get through this. Supreet, come on up. Give it up for Supreet, everyone. Thank you. Hi. Hey, you might not believe what I'm going to tell you next, but let me assure you, all of it is true. So this talk is about an email I received from a Nigerian friend of mine. It starts something like this. 
compliments of the season to you and your family. Before proceeding on my mail, let me quickly seize this opportunity to intimate you that I got your email via one of India's web directories. Nevertheless, let me introduce my personality to you. My good names are Engineer Mike Eghees Milakomba. I'm a 61-year-old South African, but permanently residing in the United Kingdom. Actually, as a means of establishing abroad, I'm soliciting for high network individual or company that can help assist me in setting up a business venture in your country. Please, I need someone that has vision and passion with real sense of humor and must be about the age of 18, adult age. Well, for further information regarding this proposal, if interested, do contact me via personal email address stated below, milkigrey4sa at webmail.co.za. P.S. Please do not take this for a joke slash child's play. Only reply, reply if you're interested. Otherwise, ignore this mail. I would appreciate if you are from India, Indian citizen, because investing in the land of India is my major concern. I await your response regarding the same. Thank you. So you would think that this is a spam email, right? You would just automatically spam this and Google will never let Mr. Uh, what's his name get in touch with you ever again. Have you ever realized that these are real people? They can be sending us emails. So I, I wrote an email back to Mr. Milikomba, and turns out he's a real guy, right? He's in Nigeria, and the poor guy wants to invest in India, and you guys are all spamming him, right? That's not cool. So what I do, I write an email back, I invite him back to Bangalore, and he's coming down to Bangalore, he flies down, and, in the, and the flight lobby is full. Guess who is there? Rita from Kormangla, Stella from Indiranagar, who else? I made notes, but, but I forgot who else was there. But there were a swarm of young women, right? I had seen their pictures when I was on Pirate Bay. I was trying to you know, download some torrents and do my stuff. But they were there in real life. I, I thought there was some kind of you know, spam. But these guys were there. And you know, they were there to welcome Mr. Milikomba. Right? So I don't believe any of this. Uh, and I go and I mingle with people. And turns out, there's a lady who makes $350 a day also. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know, I've done some SEM and I could earn $350 a day, but I never thought that this was real. So it turns out that lady who earns $350 a day is there with her daughter. Right? 17,500 in Indian rupees. That's so cool, man. Right? So then turns out I go back and I talk to all of these really, really cool people. You know, Natasha from Basungudi introduces me to her, uh, her grandma Rita, who's 60 years old and she just wants to make friends and, you know, she feels this weird energy about me. And she, you know, she emails me and then I add her on Facebook. And then there's this Nicaraguan businessman who sends me a proposal. Believe it or not, I am today an internet millionaire. Right? Just by responding to the emails of these kind people online, I have made a living for myself. Right? That was in the end. The ex-girlfriends club got in touch with me. Right now, all of them are forming a committee which says netizens against discrimination. Uh, it contains Mr. Orgil Batar from Israel, Ben Johnson from the UK, Mohammed Aziz from Israel, Jap Sem from Korea, but I think he's from Vietnam, Milan Abraham, and all of these people. Right? So the message I want to leave you today is that the next time you see an email from any of these people, please respond to it. Please be kind enough to write to these people. There are real people behind all of these images. And they want to talk to you and reach out to you. Right? Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, it's part of a short story that I'm writing. If you have any other ideas about internet people that, you, that might exist in real life, please feel free to talk to me and you know, give me your ideas. Thanks. Yeah, incidentally, Supreet's also the guy tweeting from the Meta Refresh uh, Twitter ID. <laughs> oh, that's why the tweet stopped while he came up. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we've got uh, three more to go. Uh, three more to go. Uh, Rishabh? Rishabh, are you in? Raman down, quickly. There's beer waiting at the end of this event. No, come, come, come. <laughs> All right, everyone give it up for Rishabh. Thank you. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're good. You want browser tab? And not just the button. Yes. Hello. I would actually like to talk about a tool I made some time back, like back in 2011. One second. Hello, hello. Is it slow? Okay. One second, I, I may need to log in. So this is basically a tool I made so, uh, I made some time back. It's it's like JS Fiddle where Yes. I made this tool. One second. The internet is, the internet is a bit slow. Yes. Tab doesn't work. What do you want to do? I want to click this. Tab doesn't work. No, there you go. Should be logging in. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can't like tab is a little off. Oh, okay. It seems to be off. It's a lot like JS Fiddle. Okay. You can write co you can write code and it renders in real time in the real time preview the pane. So and then something like uh, let's say. Mm, it supports Zen coding too, and then you can s then you can save it. So it saves there. Now on the home page, you, you on the home page you can see a, uh, lots of cool stuff made by different people. I mean, these have been con uh, contributed by the community. You can do you can do the same if you can create something cool with CSS3, HTML5, and so on. And it has few other cool features too. Let me show you. One is uh, this codecasts thing. The cost, the codecast features uh, feature is basically like if you write some code in those uh, HTML, CSS, and JS tabs, uh, th the boxes. When you write something there, the the environment is going to record it and save it in the server, and other people can then play it back. So, for example, let's uh, uh, let's play this this one. So you can see it. The guy who made this, he just typed all the code just like that, and it got recorded. And then there's this player where you can play it back. You can, you can fast forward it. You can rewind it. Play at different speeds too. 
let me take it a bit further as you can see this piece of code this is getting typed so you can actually see things getting built in real time and then they get rendered on on the pane and this this, this is i think this is a good way of learning html css js if you want you can create code casts and i can just review them and add it to the home page i can feature them and there's one more feature i would like to talk about you can also create private bins so that no one can see you get a unique private url and one more thing it also supports real time collaboration so multiple people can code and chat in real time there may be some bugs or quirks you can you can always use this feedback form on the right side the button click it it will show you a form in a model and you can send me feedbacks now i just opened the same page the same bin page uh, in two tabs you can see under the collaborators list you can uh, see me twice but if 10 10 different people they join in you you will be able to watch them uh, i mean they they'll get listed in that collaborators list and then there's this chat you can use the chat and you can also code it will get emitted to all the nodes in real time so so that's it and if you if you would like to contact me there's this uh, about you can find my deta my details on that about and contact page the one of one, th one of the urls is to my twitter account and the other is to my blog that has the contact form so that's it thank you thank you uh That's one way to meet the creator of cssdeck.com. A uh, big round of applause, man! Awesome, big fan of your work, big fan. Uh, all right, um, Navjot, you're up. Uh, we're going to run through these next three, but yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Go for it. All, all right. Uh, hey guys, uh, back again. Um, so uh, these are just. Uh, I, I I like taking photographs, and and I had the opportunity to travel around. a uh, lot when i was working at opera so uh when i take photographs you know a lot of times i i'll take a picture and uh i'll get something in mind you know when i when i see this through my, through the viewfinder or i'll look at it later in the on the computer i'll get something in mind and so what i try to do is you know a lot of times i'll put some pictures up and at the bottom you can see i i try to put a caption to kind of give that picture you know a different kind of an angle uh so i'll I, it's a, probably hopefully not very long so i'll just uh run through a few of these pictures and uh, maybe you know just mention some of the story so this was actually taken in munich and we were just waiting outside to go to a conference uh we we were on a car and we had a flat tire so we were standing there and it took this picture and it just you know i named it i'll be watching you kind of i saw the the that tower in the background looking over which is looked like a church or an old church or something looking over the cars um This was uh, this was in Italy and this was a couple who is uh it looks like they're about to kiss but they weren't they were actually they I saw them kissing and I was like oh, I need to capture this and they were you know just finishing the kiss. So but it looks like and it reminded me of the the hallmark or the archies cards that you know you used to get um uh in India when we were teenagers. So I named it they still do that. Um 
Uh, this was in, um, in Oslo. I was walking back from work. This is when I used to work for Opera. So I was walking back from work, and I saw this guy. So this was, you know, in, op in, in Oslo, six months, it's darkness. So this could be 3 p.m. or 1 p.m., and it'll you know, look like this. It'll be dark. So I, I was walking down, and this was one of the roads. I saw this guy. He was walking up the street as well. So I saw him, and I kind of felt that this is kind of how I look when, I, when I'm walking back. So I took this picture. And, you know, it was just a walk back home. That guy was also walking back home. I was on my way. He was on his way. So I kind of found it interesting. So I took this picture. Um, this, was, uh, this was in Kiev to the, to the Ukrainian Vladimir here. Um, so this was our, we were sitting in a, in a restaurant in Kiev, and these two women were chatting. And I, just, I was just clicking pictures, and I saw, shot, got the shot. And really, <laughs> and the caption I used was, I think the spell worked. It looks like the girls, you know telling her which grandmother or something, you know, I, like, I think the spell worked. Um, this, was, uh, this was again, I think in, in, again in Ukraine, Lviv, um, saw this uh, guy carrying a Angelina Jolie handbag and I clicked it. And it's it kind of very interesting because you can't see anyone else in the picture, but you can see Angelina Jolie kind of looking over, so I called it the voyeur. Um, this is, I think in Russia, but yeah, there's a, there's a broken, this was the driver, he was driving around and the grass, glass was broken, there was a crack on the glass, but he stuck a cross on it and, you know, he was driving around, so uh, it was kind of, you know, just one of those moments, you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, you know, he's put it there, it is, so I, I called it, where does the faith lie? Um, this was back in Oslo uh, at a club, they used to play live music and there was this picture which, so it, they, had, they had a lot of random stuff behind them. This was a bar where there was a resident band. And one of this was these pictures. And it was just a picture I saw again and again and just kind of stuck to me. You know, it, it, was, it stayed in my mind. And I just got this picture, took the, took the picture of all these guys standing in front of her playing their instruments. And, and you know, she was just, so it was kind of like, uh, yeah, the forgotten entertainer. Um, this is, again in Oslo, this was I think at 3 a.m. I, I, I just walked out of a club. I had a camera with me. Uh, <laughs> I walked out of a club and they were, just got this picture and I didn't realize what I clicked, but when I looked at it, I called it some unlucky, some are not. You can see this guy standing alone. There's a couple there and there's three guys. So it kind of just resonated with me, you know, some are lucky, some are not. Um, <clears throat> this was a friend, he was walking and I took this picture and I called it the fly or the spider because all these railings on the side, they kind of look like a spider web. It could be a spider web or it could be her wings. So it's kind of, um, yeah, that's what made sense. <laughs> this was in, in uh, I think in France. And this dog was sitting in the display. Everyone was looking at them. And he really looked miserable. All the guys, all the couples and the girls standing outside, they were like, oh, so cute. But he looked miserable, right? <laughs> and so I called it one of trade places. <laughs> Everyone's just looking at him uh, or her. Uh, this is, I think, uh, by far the most interesting one, and I'm going to tell you a small story around it. I think Shwetang's already heard this maybe a million times. But this was uh, in Kyiv. Uh, I was there to talk at a university, give a, give a talk in university. Kyiv's the capital of Ukraine. So when we got there, you know, Opera had this concept, uh, you know, when you travel, you, we traveled cheap, and, you know, we would fly economy, and you'd stay at a hotel which shouldn't be more than $100 a night. So when we landed there, uh, I looked at where I was going to stay, and it said Hotel Kiev. I was like, okay, it sounds fancy. You know, it's Kiev and it's Hotel Kiev. So we go, to, we, we go to the city, and it's, you know, in the center of the city, it's like, like Brigade Road or MG Road. It's, you know, the main shopping street. At the end of the main shopping street, there's this big, massive building. And that said Hotel Kiev on the top. So I was like, wow, I'm staying in Hotel Kiev. It's like the, the main hotel, it seems like. So we, we go there. I was with two colleagues of mine, um, uh, a Ukrainian girl and a Russian guy. And so we go in there, and they're like, and it, you, 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 know, you park the car, and you walk in the lobby, and you kind of know why you managed to get it for less than $100, because it looks shabby, and it wasn't you know, well-maintained, and it was quite old. So anyways, we go in there, we uh, check in, we go up to our rooms, and uh, I open my laptop. I have to, this is pr over the weekend, and we have a conference. I have to give my talk. So I wanted to prepare my talk, I needed the internet access. So I was sitting there and I was like, I uh, can't find Wi-Fi. So I go, go down to, to the reception and I'm like, uh, Wi-Fi? And no one, no one talks English. So I'm like, Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi. Um, so you know, she's like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 data machine? 
which is a computer, right? So I'm like, yeah, 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 Wi-Fi, I need internet, internet. She's like, uh, okay. Um, like, she just points and she's like, oh, go across the, you know, she's like, no, 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 go there. And I see a door uh, across the lobby, so she's like, yeah, just go there. I was like, okay. Um, so, so I go there, I have my laptop in my hand, and this door is, is a door with like beads hanging in front of it, and there's a guy standing outside, like a big guy in a black suit, and I'm like, okay, I was like, uh, and he, I go there, and he just looks at me, doesn't say anything, he opens, like, you know, just pulls the beads aside, and I go in, and I walk in, it's a black, it's dark, you know, lights around, it takes me about five minutes to realize, look around, I'm standing in a strip bar, I'm like, whoa, I needed Wi-Fi, and I'm in the strip bar, <laughs> I'm like, what, what just happened? Anyway, I go to the bar, there's a, there's a counter right next to me, so I go there, thinking I can sit down there and, you know, just check. And luckily, the girl behind the counter uh, spoke English. Probably the only person I met in that hotel who knew English. So anyway, I sit down, and, and I open my laptop, and, and immediately she comes over. She's like, oh, you need Wi-Fi? Uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. She's like, here's the password. And <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sitting there in the strip bar, and I'm like, here, yeah, and I'm like looking over, and I'm like, is it rude if I don't look there? And, 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 like, and after a while, I realized, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm in a strip bar. Why am I looking at my computer? I switched my computer down. <laughs> right? So I started looking the other side. I get a drink. I get a drink. And uh, I go and sit down on the couch. And I you know, take my phone. I message my friend. They're like, the Wi-Fi is in the strip bar. So, and I'm not kidding. So come down. So I'm sitting on the couch. Um, and my friends walk in. And they're like, oh, you were right. So eventually, you know, we have a few drinks, and we're sitting there, we're like, have to make this presentation, so open, and it was the coolest thing to do, you know, you're a geek, the story you can tell, uh, sitting in a strip bar, uh, <laughs> you do get some Greek cred for it. Uh, so I open my laptop, you know, and, and I'm uh, working, and of course you get all these funny glares from these women, you know, the girl, the, c the couch next to me, the girl there, she's giving a lap, lap dance, and she's like, what are you doing, and I'm, so anyways, I, I start working. And, and I'm on Skype, uh, and my friend back, uh, you know, my colleagues back in Oslo, they're online. So I see this one guy, Roberto, a good friend of mine. So I, I, I Skype call him, I video call him. Uh, and he's sitting at work, and he just, he's like, oh, hold on, let me get my headset. He gets his headset and calls on. He's like, can't, dude, I can't see you. And I've got my headphones on. And I was like, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, don't worry, don't worry. So I slowly turn my laptop. <laughs> and he's like, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, whoa, what the? <laughs> Where are you? So I was like, believe it or not, I'm sitting in a strip club. He's like, lots of questions. First of all, why are you on the computer? I was like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. He's like, dude, really? I was like, yeah. So he's like, okay. Uh, anyways, we switched, uh, uh, I switch off the Skype, and I try making my presentation. You know, works a little bit. But, um, and this lady comes over, and she's trying to talk to me now. You know, she's probably curious. She's one of the, you know, not a lot of guys there. So she's bored, and, she's, and she comes over. She's like, uh, this strip club. You data machine. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. So I was like, yeah. And she just smiled, you know, probably trying to make conversation, didn't know more English. Uh, that's it. Anyways, we go back, and next morning, so this is in the morning, um, we come back down, and we're like, Wi Fi? We have to. She's like, yeah, yeah stri uh, strip club, that's it. And believe me, we walk in, and it's not a strip club anymore. It's a cafe. It's, there's no strippers, nothing. This is the morning. And we walk in, and uh, yeah, of course we're a bit disappointed where we're like, ah. <laughs> we're like, oh, okay, we can make the presentation. So we sit down, start making a presentation. We get coffee, the same girl behind the counter still there, you know, who speaks English. And she gives us coffee, and we're like, okay, sit down, now we'll work. And this is Sunday morning, I think around like uh, 11.30 or something. So we're sitting and working, and believe me, all the strippers from last night walk in to practice. So this is them, so this is one of the strippers on the pole dance, this is practicing. No one else there, they're, no one, they're not in their dresses, they're just in their you know, uh, pajamas and whatnot, and they're practicing on the poles. So I had my camera and I had to take this picture. So I had my bag, my computer laptop bag, so I took out my camera while these girls were practicing. So you can see these are laptops in the, at the bottom of the screen, these are our laptops, we were working, and there were strippers behind us, you know, in front of us, uh, doing their practice. So yeah, just one of the interesting stories from, uh, <laughs> from Kiev. Uh, that's all. Thanks a lot. Thank you for that slice of life. He's a speaker and a storyteller, ladies and gentlemen. Um, next up, Hounby Kostub.
bring it on. Everybody give a, ha a round of applause for Kostub. Hello. That's not my computer. <laughs> huh? Huh, that's my computer. Oh, that's not what I want to show. That's what Sajid's going to show you next. Um, oh, did I just close your tab? Sorry. Um, Okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna. Yeah. This is the boring bit. No strippers involved here. Uh, but uh, I just want to show quickly a couple of projects I've been working. I've uh, been working on and been involved in over the last several months. Um, I work for an organization called Tactical Tech, and um, we're a not-for-profit, and we do a lot of work with uh, uh, activists. A lot of the work we do is uh, also around privacy and expression. A lot of work around net freedom. And we did some fun stuff last year, and it's called Me and My Shadow. The idea of this project was to just kind of like look at it, look, uh, like, um, look at in a fun way what kind of digital traces you're leaving behind every time you're engaging with technology. So we have this one really cool uh, visu uh, interactive visualization thing where you can like go in and go, oh, I use Facebook, I use a computer, I use a mobile phone. How much am I giving away? What? How, how, oh, I'm, I'm so screwed. And that's, that's fun. But uh, the, one of the other things that we did was actually look at uh, terms of services and privacy policies of uh, different organizations, uh, different online um, um, web services we use um, pretty much every day and, and, and kind of like figure out what do they actually say. This is Yahoo. There's, uh, there's some stuff about Twitter and stuff. So yeah, so basically, these are long, really. And nobody wants to read through them. And what do they, but what do they actually say? That's all we really wanted to get to. So this is what we did. That's what it actually says. And we've done this for a few, huh? Yeah, so we've done this with a few of them. This is um, with Twitter, for example. That's an excerpt from the privacy policy sometime around April 2012. It's long. It says a lot of stuff about, oh, we don't do this, we don't do this, we don't do this. But what do you guys actually do with my stuff? This is what they actually do with your stuff. Um, anyway, this is not what I want to talk about today. Um, um, that was, that's fun to use, just like uh, poke around a bit and play. There's a slightly more serious project I've been involved in uh, a little bit of late, and it's called Terms of Service Didn't Read. Um, so, like we all do, uh, I do this too. I just click every time I see a checkbox which says, I have read terms, terms and service, uh, um, uh, and I agree to it, and I just yeah, go on ahead, use the service. But uh, there are times when I really wonder, okay, how do I actually know what these guys are doing without actually having to read? through all of this stuff. And that's what this project does. It's a, it's a community project where a bunch of people get together and contribute uh, to kind of rating what different uh, TOS for different websites say. It, the way it works is there's a working group, which is a, which is a mailing list, um, which anyone can kind of uh, join and contribute data to. Uh, and then there's a bunch of browser extensions um, and an API which let you figure out what, uh, how, what, how these things have been rated. So I have, uh, I have a little Chrome extension here. Do you see that little question mark right up there in my bar? 
Um, that question mark exists because this has not been, there's no class that's been assigned to it. The working group's been doing a bunch of work on this and figuring out, okay, this is what Twitter actually does. It deletes your account after 30 days. It keeps the right to your content. That's a bad thing. Uh, Twitter provides archives of their terms. That's kind of a neutral thing. They do a good thing. They promise to infor inform about data requests. So if, uh, if someone's uh, government's asking them for your data, they are going to tell you that they were asked. So, um, so it just basically grades different terms of services on an A to E scale, A being really good and E being, oh, you guys suck. Um, so a lot of these haven't been graded yet, but yeah, one, one, one service that we all kind of like, which has been graded a very high B, is GitHub. Most things, they seem to do most things right, except they can change stuff anytime, sometimes without notice. Your personal information is limited for, uh, is used for limited purposes. This is what they do with it. And there's a few bad things they do. So yeah, it's just a, it's, it's useful sometimes and it's, uh, it's just something I wanted to bring to everyone's notice because it could, this project could use a lot of help. And I think it's, yeah, it has been helping a lot of people use these services every day. So that's it from me. That's awesome. That's another service that I didn't know a buddy of mine actually made that I've used. Uh, thanks a lot, Kostub. Uh, next up, Sajad. Uh, this is the last one, and then we'll be heading out. Uh, hey, I get to be the last speaker. Uh, hey, uh, I just want to show you uh, a recent uh, thing that I've been poking around. So I work for a nonprofit called Akshara Foundation, and they do a lot of stuff around schools in, uh, in Karnataka. So I'm, I'm part of this project called the Karnataka Learning Partnership, and we had this... Uh, a uh, map portal for a long time, which was using Google Maps, and it, it sucked big time. So uh, recently, I sort of rewrote the whole thing using uh, some of the new stuff. So what you see here is actually a very interesting JavaScript library called Leaflet, leaflet.js. Uh, what it does is it takes maps on the web and on, the, uh, on any kinds of other display. It performs really well. It displays maps properly. It, it'll let you add custom controls. So one of the things that you can do here is, all right, don't seem to be, okay, so, and this is staging, so I don't know whether something goes wrong. So it clusters the markers according to the zoom level. The internet's very slow. Uh, and you can do things like this. Like you can add custom controls and say, I want to see, go. There. So it picks up stuff in the particular uh, area that you want to see and things like that. So, uh, and it does a pretty good search as well. It uses the Google API. Um, the search is right now optimized for Bangalore because we don't have a lot of data about uh, schools in the other states. It should work. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty much. Thanks. Thank you, Sajid. Have I missed anyone out? No? All right, and that's it for this year's edition of Meta Refresh Lightning Talks. Thank <coughs> Thanks a lot, speakers. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great range. And uh, we'll move on to the party from here. Thanks, guys. Be sure to be here early tomorrow. Uh, we are, have another full day of talks, and it'll be even better than it was today because I'll shave or something. Anyway, all right, see you guys. Head, head, head to the party.